very much to everyone who is here for this wonderful celebration. Uh, I'm chair of the Chief Justice's Power of Democracy Steering Committee, and she set up her civic learning initiative shortly after she became Chief Justice, and this is the ninth year that we've been presenting civic learning awards. We began the awards uh, when there was a great concern about the lack of civic awareness and knowledge among students, and not just students, but also <laughs> citizens in general. And particularly there was ignorance, a great deal of ignorance about the judiciary as a third branch. But we realized at the time that there were schools with great civic learning programs. And we wanted to recognize them and hold them up as models for other schools. More recently, we realized that there are individuals in the education community who are consistently doing great work and inspiring others. So we decided to recognize them as our champions. Through all this, our work could not have been carried out without the support of the California Department of Education and particularly the enthusiastic support of State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman and his staff. Since the pandemic began, we have seen the profound impact on teachers and students of remote learning, but we've also been heartened by the quick pivot to remote learning uh, and adaptation of programs to continue civic learning. Today, we honor schools and individuals who have shown a commitment to excellence in civic learning. It's now my great honor to introduce the Chief Justice and the State Superintendent of Public Invitation. And I've got a few words to say, Chief, before I turn the microphone over to you. There's a lot of commonality between the Chief Justice, uh, Tani Cantil Sakaway, and Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman. Tani Cantil Sakaway is the 28th Chief Justice of the state of California. She's actually the Chief Justice of the state, not just of the Supreme Court. She was sworn into office on January 3rd, 2011, and is the first Asian Filipina American and the second woman to serve as California's Chief Justice. Before becoming Chief Justice, she had many years of experience on trial and appellate courts. She's a Sacramento native and, and attended community college, then UC Davis. She serves as a member of the Foundation for Democracy and Justice, an organization committed to civics education and is focused and has been focused for many years on improving civic engagement in California schools. I think that all started when she watched what her girls were learning when they were in school. With her on this program is Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman. He's the 28th State Superintendent of Public Instruction in California and was sworn in in January of 2019. He had previously served on the Richmond City Council, the West Contra Costa County School Board, and the California State Assembly for the 15th District, uh, which includes parts of Richmond, Berkeley, and Oakland, an amazingly diverse community. While in the State Assembly, uh, Superintendent Thurman served on the Education, Health, and Human Services Committee. In 2020, the California Board of Education approved the State Seal of Civic Engagement Award to encourage active citizenship and dedication to democracy and civic learning. He is the first Afro-Latino and the second African-American to hold his current position. And he too has two daughters. He lives in Richmond. Uh, let's, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about their shared values. Uh, they, they are co-sponsors of the Civic Learning Awards. And we are here not just to celebrate accomplishments, but to study the issues and propose solutions. These uh, honorees and the partnership is vital to civics education movement we see in California. And the superintendent and the chief justice paths first came together in 2013 at the launch of the chief justices keeping kids in school and out of court initiative. Tony Thurman attended that event as part of a team representing Contra Costa County. And seven years later as state superintendent, he and the chief addressed teachers and judges at the initiative's final meeting in Sacramento one month before the pandemic. 
so horrible to think it's been over a year. They've both dedicated their careers to public service and during their college years, both studied law. The chief of, of course went to UC Davis and pursued a law degree. Our state superintendent earned a dual master's degree in law and social policy and social work from the eminent Bryn Mawr College. The chief served as a judge in Sacramento where she established the state's first domestic violence court and then was elevated to the Court of Appeal. She became Chief Justice in 2011. State Superintendent Thurman advocated for the underserved as an assembly member before assuming office as State Superintendent in 2019. When you bring leaders like these together, great things happen. Chief, I'll turn the microphone over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Justice McConnell. I want to thank you personally before I begin my remarks for your powerful leadership of the power of democracy. Um, Justice McConnell didn't tell you the other part, and that is the entire reason the judiciary in California is now focused on civics is because back in the 2000s, she chaired a subcommittee from a larger committee having to do with impartial courts on education. And it was her recommendation with her committee that the judiciary should take the lead in educating our residents about the importance of the judiciary, our three branches of government and the democracy in which we live. And when I became chief justice 10 to 11 years later, I seized upon her recommendation and asked her to lead. And we have not stopped yet, but that's primarily because of the leadership of Justice McConnell and the power of democracy, and also because of the diversity of membership of the power of democracy committee with federal judges and lawyers and administrators and academics. We have found that this is such a vital center to talk about and to come up with programs for our future leaders, all of you students. And of course, I can't say enough about the privilege it is to work with our superintendent of public instruction, Mr. Thurmond. I worked with him in the assembly. I'm just thrilled about his commitment, his brilliance, his, in his incentive, and it is inspiring to partner with him to be part of your lives. Um, I wanna also say I thank the teachers I thank the principals, I thank the school district superintendents because none of this could get to our intended targets of K through 12 without you. And yet I also know that you have so many other issues on your plates that require your attention and testing and how unimaginable this last year has been to now try to deliver uh, this industry uh, by remote connection. And so I, my respect for you all is profound. Um, Justice McConnell said something funny. It is true that with my two daughters were in high school and I learned that government was taught in the second semester of senior year. Just think about that. Second semester, okay. Senior year? Do they even show up for second semester senior year? <laughs> well, I think my daughters did. They said they did. But I say that because uh, we're not capturing the full brain at that point. And so this emphasis on K through 12 makes a huge difference. Additionally, when my children were in middle school, I learned that they were having government day every year. And I was a judge and I knew lawyers, but they never asked the judiciary to participate. Uh, friends of mine who were lobbyists, friends of mine who worked in the Capitol, all were asked. And I'd say, well, where's the judiciary? And the teachers at my daughter's middle school would say, the judiciary. <laughs> so we knew we had a lot of work ahead of us. Myself, I've been committed since I was a trial judge to appearing in courtrooms, uh, not courtrooms, classrooms, to talk to students about being part of justice and what it means in their lives. And to this day, I still do it. I still make the rounds in Sacramento, uh, one of the middle schools and a high school, to stay in touch and to also really feel the energy from the teachers, the administrators, and the students about teaching students tools for the future. I congratulate all of you because, you know, one of my central beliefs about civics education, which is learning about government, the judiciary, but also about the levers of power and how to effectuate real change is something that our students will take away as a tool forever. 
and that when change is needed and they are called upon to participate or they decide to participate, they will know where to go and how to go about doing it. And in the process of teaching civics, I know that we impart, you impart collegiality, collaboration, the importance of celebrating differences and making things work with negotiation, the importance of critical thinking and making sure that we hear everyone, choose a route forward, but are willing to reconsider and assess as we go along. That kind of critical thinking with each other makes a world of difference in our government and in the people we are with, and not only in government and not only in our work, but even our family life, even how we treat each other when we make decisions and we have challenges within our family life. And all of us know that 2020 and this part of 2021 has indeed been challenging. And so my empathy is with you, but also my pride because you continue to make civics a priority. And so I know we honor uh, the civics awards of excellence, distinction and the champions, but all of you are civil advocates. And I'm so proud to join you in that effort. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Justice McConnell. Uh, thank you, Chief Justice Kantil Saku. It is uh, such an honor to join you today in recognizing these civics uh, awardees of excellence and these champions. And I have to thank you, uh, Justice McConnell, for that introduction. I've had the opportunity many times to um, uh, share um, speaking opportunities with the Chief Justice, but I, I feel so honored in the manner in which you, I felt like you linked us forever. You know, I felt like, uh, you know, I felt like uh, the Chief Justice is my sister from another mister, my twin, you know, she'll be the smarter, more brilliant one. I'll be the older one, um, but it is just such an honor. And I loved hearing uh, those ways that our lives and our journeys have really, um, have really winded down similar pathways. And we found our, our, our way um, to public service. There, there's one other thing that we share in common. And it's a term that may not be in the textbooks that our students use. The term is one though that we talk about in government all the time, and it's using the bully pulpit. It is literally the way we talk about the things that you can do with the power of your office, even if they're not directly called out, but using your office for good. And our chief justice has done that. And I think you heard in the chief justice remarks that sometimes people forget about the power for good uh, that our judiciary can play. And that is a reason for why it should be part of the conversation about civics. Not to mention it's one of our three branches that we should be teaching our students before they reach the second semester of their senior year. And as a, as a parent of a, of a senior who may not have uh, continued on in that second semester because she met all of her requirements, not because she skipped out, it is, it is an opportunity. And you know, when you, when you have a parent who's in government, you probably get civics lessons all the time, even when you don't want them. Uh, I imagine the Chief Justice uh, children, her daughters have experienced that. You know, my kids were born into this, uh, but it is such an important thing. I had the most powerful honor to teach a civics course of young men who were in a juvenile camp a few years ago. And obviously it's heartbreaking that they're getting their education in a juvenile camp. But we used that opportunity to dream about how their lives could be different. I was so amazed at how well they followed and tracked, not just what we talked about, but everything that was happening in the legislature, everything that was happening in government. They grilled me on bills that I was voting on. They knew things before I even had thought about it. And so we worked on a piece of legislation together to literally change how young people um, are connected to our criminal justice system, to find ways and alternatives to our criminal justice system. And I'm grateful for that day in 2013 when I first heard the Chief Justice speak about the power of keeping kids in school and out of court. It is so important. And so Chief Justice, I believe that you and I are both using the bully pulpit to influence um, many to learn about pathways that they might not otherwise know about, the power for good, um, that comes from our offices and the, and the opportunities that it affords us that we can afford to many others. Today though, we herald you, all of you awardees and champions who persevered in what I believe is the most difficult time that we will ever face in our lifetime, a pandemic that literally has taken lives, the pandemic of racism that has allowed us to see the killing of George Floyd, that has allowed us to see violence and hate against Asian American and Pacific Islanders, to see rises in anti-Semitism and other forms of hate against immigrants and, and our migrant families and our English learners. You know, these are difficult times. And what you all are doing as civics champions is gonna help us to make a better lot for all of us. 
our success is tied to each other. And the more we work together, the more we can show that we can use the power of connection, of education to end hate and to bring us together. And so we've rolled out a number of initiatives focused on grants to do implicit bias training and anti-racism training um, that we call education and hate to focus on closing our achievement gap, uh, to do things that you all are doing, to be involved in your community. And we think that civics plays a key role. I am so excited to say that in spite of all the challenges that we face during the pandemic, that there are 3,000 people who've asked, who, who've met the, uh, the, the requirements to receive uh, the seal that comes along with achieving the commitments around civic education. A thank you to our teachers and administrators, our parents and our students for not giving up on civics because during a pandemic, we need it even more. And so let me put a pin in it there and just say congratulations. Um, I've got to jump off in a bit, but I want to stay on if there are questions that you all have for the Chief Justice, from myself, and to hear from all of you as we celebrate you as our champions uh, for civics education. Congratulations, felicidades. Thank you for your commitment to our communities in California. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for putting this together for us. I have so much that I could share about Villa Park Elementary and all the wonderful things our students are doing here, but I just wanna give you a little bit of a snapshot of what we've been working on this year and kind of our journey for the past three years. So Villa Park Elementary has taken on the challenge of increasing civic engagement in our school for the past three years. Teachers and students engage in civic learning throughout all grade levels. Right now, our fifth graders are having a great time learning about the Constitution. In addition, we strive to support our community, state, and other countries with our service learning projects. We participate yearly in service learning projects such as Pennies for Patients and Team Kids Challenge, where our students learn that they aren't too young to make an impact in their own community. Three years ago, I attended a restorative practices training and I knew that this was something that we would love to incorporate within Villa Park Elementary. Since then, we have been slowly training our staff on these practices such as restorative circles. Our students participate in restorative practices on campus and in their classroom, whether they are in-person learning this year or virtually learning this year. During restorative circles, we may discuss issues like bullying, race, gender, disability, and inequity often tying that to current events. I am beyond proud of Villa Park Elementary students and our staff, and we are honored to be awarded this Civic Learning Award of Distinctions. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much. So overall, our community leadership course at Cairo's Public Schools is open to middle school students and is designed to develop personal leadership skills, to build awareness of current issues, practice critical thinking, and teach responsible citizenship. Through our projects, community service, and class discussions, students are more equipped to engage effectively and thoughtfully with the world around them. And interestingly, over the past two years, Students who have been applying for our parent organization scholarship most frequently have identified this course as the course that has most significantly impacted their life. So we know what we're doing is successful and we truly appreciate this award of distinction. We also have here today, uh, Lisa Courtney, who is our amazing instructor for community leadership. We would also like to add a few uh, comments if she can. Hi, thank you for having me here. Um, so communicate, community leadership in Kairos Middle School is a required sixth through eighth grade program that seeks to bolster student participation in community outreach. Our students are developing their knowledge and understanding of the world, becoming more aware of their place in it and what it means to be a global citizen. At Kairos, we want our students to appreciate the words diversity and effectively contribute to local, national, and global communities to develop informed views and real life issues and to make appropriate and responsible decisions when interacting with others, both on online and off. Now this year, due to the COVID restrictions in our local community, 
our eighth graders um, were unable to do um, extracurricular off-campus activities, which we normally do. However, we continued to promote safe individual participation and community service opportunities, such as organizing the school-wide Healthy Kids Heart Challenge and teaching students what it means to be caring and responsible citizens by connecting them with their communities at large in order to build lasting partnerships. Many students in our middle school continue to volunteer their time at their church, their local food banks, and with other community agencies. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, well, Royal High School is very, very excited to be a part of this, and we have been now for for a while. We've been we've been applying every opportunity we get, and I just want to say to everybody involved uh, in, in making this award uh, available, I'm very happy that this is an aspirational award. Uh, it's the kind of award that um, we enjoy trying to improve year after year in order to to achieve, and so I'm really grateful for this. Um, so what we do at our school, uh, well, first of all, the whole program was born out of a, a desire to, uh, to find a, an identity for our school and civics made a lot of good sense. And I'm joined here by uh, Superintendent Dr. Poplinski and, and my principal, uh, Mr. Derek. And um, with a tremendous amount of support from them, what we did is created a Citizen Scholar Institute. We did it in collaboration with the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library's Education Department, uh, which is just up the hill from where our school is located. Um, and so what I'd like to say about what we do is we don't teach democracy. We don't talk about democracy. We actually do democracy. So we, we created a program modeled on the six proven practices. Um, and we really leaned into taking on controversial issues uh, and promoting service learning. So in regards to taking on controversial issues, we created a speaker series. We call it our Brown Bag Lunch Speaker Series. And um, the speaker series brings in so that all Royal High School students have the opportunity to hear nearly every single candidate for office, whether it's at the federal, the state, uh, or the local level. Uh, and, and in those events, our, our students have the opportunity to ask questions of these people. And so we bring in others as well. We bring in community advocates, non-elected government officials, veteran groups, uh, distinguished alumni. Um, but the, the, the process of having our students interacting with our speakers uh, really develops a keener sense of civic belonging in our, in our students. Uh, and then also the pervading theme is, you know, responsibility to community. And so just to give a couple of examples, you know, we have our students ask questions about recidivism rates, you know, when the sheriff, when the county sheriff comes to town. We have students uh, asking, you know, the, the chief of police about, about uh, body cameras and the use of body cameras. Uh, the local newspapers reporting was, uh, was, was consistently very, very negative was so little positive. We have students asking the editor of the newspaper, you know, about this trend. And so um, having students have the opportunity to be active in, in democracy locally, we think has, uh, has been paying off great dividends. And so very, very thankful for the award. All right, well, it's good to be here. I'm very happy. Hello, uh, uh, Superintendent Thurman. It's nice to see you again. Um, I'm also the direct, I'm also, I'm the principal of Cloud Campus, but I'm also the director of Literacies, Outreach, and Libraries for the Encinitas Union School District. And the reason I bring that up is literacies is plural. Uh, you know, we got a lot of people in our country who can read, but maybe they need more than just that literacy. Maybe they need, I don't know, civics literacy, uh, maybe some information literacy. Anyway, um, I'm, I, am, I am honored to be here with also our superintendent, uh, Dr. Andre Gray, and our lead teacher for Cloud Campus in the civics department, which is Mary Mambert. We're thrilled to be here with both of them. Um, but so anyway, I just want to share that Cloud Campus uh, emerged out of COVID. We didn't have a Cloud Campus. We had nine campuses. Uh, that's Encinitas is made up of nine elementary schools. Uh, and about a third of them have been recognized by this, by this group for their civics work. Um, so we've had a third of our schools at least um, be recognized already, uh, either in the area of excellence or the area of distinction, uh, whatever area, but we've been recognized. 
And somebody asked, where's the judicial branch? Well, interestingly enough, about a third of our schools have their own courtrooms. So I can tell you the judicial branch lives in Encinitas for sure. But when COVID happened, we needed to do a completely online response uh, to the needs of our families. And that's how cloud happened. Uh, that's how we happened, uh, the whole cloud campus. But what was really interesting is that since civics, it was such a deeply rooted commitment in the Encinitas Union School District, it makes complete sense to me that when we brought all these students and all these teachers from all over our district into the cloud, cloud campus, uh, that the first out the shoot, um, we got the reward of excellence. And it sounds like we got it on our first try, but in reality, it really was because we had so many people committed for so long and we just really pulled it together to make it happen. So really, really terrific. Um, another thing to bring up is that when we started this all online school for this year, we knew we had to get student engagement and we needed to get them uh, bought in to what was going on because doing all learning online is tough. And so it was really important for us to drill into not just learning, but into the love of learning. And we wanted to find out what mattered to our students. And that was essential. And finding out what mattered to our students, are you ready for this? Our students cared about civics. And, in and you know, we also wanted to care about what mattered to our teachers. And interestingly enough, especially in this year, it was not surprising that our teachers cared about civics. So based on their desire and their love for that kind of learning, we, 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 we steered into it. And there were two very important things that we felt were necessary, especially in this age, in this time. Um, our students are really great at answering questions and solving problems, but it's so essential that our students learn something maybe even more important than that. And that is for how, the, how to ask questions, how to ask their own questions. I think all of us should be doing more question asking, don't you think? And what was so wonderful is uh, we really pushed information and media literacy and we leaned on the model school library and standards as a vehicle to equip students to engage in civic learning. So they were asking questions, checking the right sources, seeing if the sources were credible. And I think we know that credible sources are important. So our students learned that. And then also for them to actually engage in action, which was really quite amazing during, you know, being at home, learning at home. How do you get kids engaged in real action? Um, and we had quite a few things that happened. Students actually monitored trash in their neighborhood. Uh, it actually changed. <laughs> There's nothing like when an elementary student is telling you, you know, maybe you should be more thoughtful about what you're, you, what you're doing. And it, it's actually got recognition in our um, nationally with, the, or at least, at least in the state with um, the uh, uh, environmental, many environmental groups. Um, we also, because of being online, we had the opportunity to visit with people we never would have ever been able to visit with before. I mean, our students were asking questions of the mayor of Encinitas, of local uh, uh, state representatives uh, in our area, state representatives, uh, federal representatives, other experts, because they had questions that needed answers. And so it was just wonderful to see, uh, see that happen and equipping our students with that, uh, that type of thing. In fact, we saw uh, students care about fresh water, uh, talking federal and local uh, 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 representatives. Um, in fact, actually they engaged with both the United Nations Sustainability Developmental Goals and the United Nations Media and Information Literacy Effort. Those two go together very nicely. And um, they even did a mock city council meeting uh, with city council members present. I guess to wrap this all up, I could talk all day about the excitement of all this, but I want to quote somebody uh, that really was really critically important to us. That's Mary Mambert, who's here, and she's not going to talk because she said, don't you dare. <laughs> but I am going to quote her. And she said, and I think she summed this up so well. She said, students understand that we, the people, must protect our democracy and democratic process through voting and sharing credible and reliable information structuring this engagement and channeling it into personal student empowerment will continue to build strong citizens for the future.
I can't be more proud of our Walker Vikings who demonstrate daily that they know the power of their voice and how to use that voice for positive change in our community and globally with the support of our district and the immense passion of our teachers, our Vikings really do lead the way. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to our dynamic duo. They really are amazing, Miss Tina Alvalante and Miss Valerie Armijo. Welcome. If you just unmute yourselves, there we go. Let's say Miss Avalante is my partner in crime, but there's a lot of judges here. So I'm going to say my partner in civics. So I want to say one that uh, Ms. Avalante and I want to thank our principal and our superintendent because we created a program called CORE, which is a civics based um, English and history class. And I want to also thank um, Superintendent Matsuda and Principal Brown for sending us to our MICFA training, because really the idea of democracy as a verb has changed the way I teach, not just civics, but history and life skills in general. And so we have done so much during this year of distance learning, so many new things, but I wanted to share an email I got from a student at the beginning of this year. So this is a student from last year who was with us in the sudden shutdown in March. And really the power of what we do at Walker is from these student words. So this is a student who's an eighth grader right now. Being a part of CORE really helped me grow as a student as well as a person. You and Ms. Avalante really impacted my life in ways I could have never imagined. You both helped me realize that I could change the world for the better and that my voice matters. And that's really, as educators, I want to live in a community where people care. And the civics education has really shown that students do care. And we all say we all have a, a seat at the dinner table. And when we're discussing these events, all the students feel like they have a buy-in and we want them to feel knowledgeable and empowered. So I feel like this is a community here and we all have our voice at the table, but I want to thank our principal and Mr. Matsuda for setting the table because we're all getting to eat and we appreciate. And I wanna thank my students who are here because they care. So we've had so much on our journey, so many new things we've tried. And even though we've been in this distance learning, I don't feel distant from my students. So I just wanna thank everybody for this. And it's been a long journey, but being here, we're gonna continue what we're doing. So thank you, Ms. Abawante. I'm done. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again. The award of excellence is uh, it's very competitive. The, the scores that as they come in, there's very, very minimal margin between them. So um, we encourage the applications uh, every year. And I know everyone aspires to get to the level of excellence. So congratulations. <laughs> I do want to add that I really appreciate that the focus shifted this year to honor programs that have successfully transitioned to remote learning, because this shows students that adaptability is so important and they can learn in any situation. Uh, when we first started Catella Talks, our goal was simple, empower students to use their voice. Six years later, we still keep that goal in mind with every step of this process. Every year, we as adults take a step back and watch our students create, collaborate, encourage, discuss, and take action. We have seen our students making immediate changes to benefit their community because of their work with the Catella Talks. We have heard English learners proudly deliver speeches in their native language. We have had students with special needs stand up in front of a room of hundreds and be heard and seen in unique ways. We've had students take their Catella talk and go on to win national contests. In short, we have seen amazing things. I know I speak for my entire team when I say that we are so proud of the work that our students do each year. All of the presenters for our main event, while selected by their peers, participate voluntarily. They do not receive an additional grade or monetary composition, but rather they choose to participate uh, and choose to practice, refine, and deliver their speeches in addition to their normal rigor rigorous schoolwork. This award and our accomplishments would simply not exist without the passion and the dedication of our kids. In addition, the tireless efforts of our staff and administration who work hours after the school day ends, as well as support from our district's board and Superintendent Michael Matsuda ensure that this project grows every year. 
We are so humbled by this award and we're so excited to use this as encouragement to keep doing good, meaningful work. So thank you. And I'd also like to welcome our principal, uh, Dr. Ben Carpenter, Carpenter to say a few words as well. First of all, I wanna thank uh, all of you for uh, allowing us to participate in this uh, outstanding program. Uh, we are humbled, we are honored to be here uh, in this elite company. I do want to thank our teachers, as they said, they step back and let our students take the lead. As a principal, I step back and let our teachers um, step back and take that lead because it is truly a student run program. And without the support of our district, Mr. Ruben Patino and our superintendent, Mike Matsuda, um, we get all of the support and more than uh, that, uh, that we need. So thank you all for uh, including us in this uh, outstanding program. Thank you. We will encourage all of you to submit applications next year. And we might even have a video uh, uh, content as part of the application. Chief, did you wanna say uh, thank you and goodbye or? I, I do, thank you, Judy. I would just say several things and that is first, bravo and brava. See you uh, next year and thank you for changing the world. <laughs>